Welcome to Dan's Talks. My guest today is Francis Bach, who is the chairman of the East Hampton Town Trustees. Um, and uh, at the moment, or maybe not, we'll find out shortly, um, uh, the trustees and Mr. Bach personally, perhaps, owe about $700,000 to some lawyers and uh, some oceanfront residences in uh, Peg. Uh, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, tell us a little bit about the trustees and what they are and how the, how they began, or maybe better yet, let's talk about the seven hundred thousand dollars. How how did this happen, and what was it for, and what tell us about what it was? Okay, so the the, the East Hampton Town trustees um, were granted ownership of the town in East Hampton by means of the Dongan patent. Um, as such- It was 1683, I believe. Yeah, I believe so. It was a long time ago. Okay. Um, and throughout history from that point, the trustees were selling off land. Um, in 1882, they sold off a thousand acres east of Amagansett to Arthur Benson. Um, in that sale, they did retain a reservation for the use of the beach for fishing purposes. Um, what does that mean? Okay. Uh, so, so it just retained the right for East Hampton residents to use the beach from, this is going to be approximate, from Napig Lane down to um, the state park. About two miles? It's 4,000 feet. Oh, um, I'm at ocean front. Yes, ocean front. Um, it's about a mile, a little less than a mile. Yeah. So so what happened was, this, this sale was, as I said, in 1882, the deed was filed. Six. I'm sorry? 1882. 1882. And we all know how long it took to develop that land. Um, so during that time, the beach was pretty much open for anybody to use. And it eventually got to a point where it became the de facto family beach um, where local people would meet on the weekends. And, and, Granted, it did get very crowded. Um, and, and so the current property owners brought a suit against the trustees to, re to regain the beach. Um, the board at that time um, won the case. Um, the decision was actually handed down just after the current board took office. Um, so we kind of inherited that. Um, the property owners then appealed. They won the appeal. And the town and the trustees uh, have appealed the fact that the decision did not include that reservation. So we have appealed trying to win that reservation back. Um, in the meantime, due to some actions by the town that were perceived as contemptuous, huh. we somehow got dragged into it. And um, the town was found guilty, as were the trustees. The trustees never had a day in court. We were never called to the courthouse. We were never called to the stand, never had an opportunity to defend ourselves. Um, we were found guilty. Well, let's be clear. The trustees are, a are an agency connected to the East Hampton town government. That we're we're has, separate. Yes, we are, you're separate, but you, you are uh, nevertheless, you are, are elected officials. Correct. Representing the townspeople. But we're a separately elected board. We we 
our funding comes from the town as far as the, its administrative costs are concerned. So Other what, than that, what happened ahead. in this case then? Nobody's been able to explain that to me yet. <laughs> I, I really don't know how we got dragged into actions by the town board. But nevertheless, um, a court judge awarded this $700,000 fine or, or, and, and legal fee uh, thing about three weeks ago, which, which uh, resulted in a lawyer going to a bank where you had your uh, bank accounts and having them shut down and seized so you couldn't use them. Is that correct? Correct. correct. So, so, so in, in a case like this, um, the town gets an automatic stay and does not have to pay any of these, these charges while it's under appeal. The trustees don't have that same protection. Why? So it's just state law. Oh. Um, we're not considered a municipality and that would fall under municipal law. So they, uh, the, the plaintiff's attorney used that as an opportunity to reach in and collect his fees, more or less. Um, we have since posted a bond to cover that cost. It was... Well, tell tell this is now three weeks later, I think. It, it's more than that. This has been going on for uh, at, at probably a month and a half. How, how, have you, how have you been able to pay your bills or haven't you? Uh, over the past month, we, we haven't. One thing we've done is we had payroll. Um, so, so I asked the chairman, I have two co-chairmen. Um, we were covering the payroll out of our pockets for two weeks. We then got the court to allow us to issue checks for payroll purposes only. Um, since then, some other invoices have come due, say, uh, for example, our payroll software. <laughs> I had to uh, put that on my uh, card and uh, the P.O. box. I had to cover that. <laughs> um, so it's just it's just been crazy, crazy stuff. Um, as of this past Friday, though, we have gotten our accounts back. Which is um, four days ago. So Correct. The hardship. Correct. I so guess this morning, the first checks were written from those accounts. In well, you, you have an office on Bluff Road, and and I guess you have bills from heating and uh, supplies. Well, that's covered by the town. Oh. Um, oh were you know, there, but we, what were some of the things you couldn't pay over this time? Uh, we run a pump-out boat program. Right. It's a uh, free service in, in Three Mile Harbor and in Montauk. Um, the season's just starting up. Um, we were unable until now to um, get that program started because we could not have, we weren't able to pay for the fuel to run the program for one thing. We were able to cover the payroll on the, on the boat captains, but any other costs we were not allowed to, to write a check for. So there was a delay in getting that program started. Um, other bills that, you know, there's insurances that we weren't able to pay immediately. Um, payroll tax, we were not allowed to, to, we could file, but we weren't able to pay. So it, it's been difficult. Well, this this judge who agreed to these fines also had um, issued a fine of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars separately against the town own, which owns the airport for what they described as um, uh, in, uh, impertinent behavior or some such thing, and that was recently thrown out. Correct by another judge. Yes. So, yes, the original judge um, retired. Yes, and, and Judge off. Whalen has taken his place. Do you think they might do the same with the the, the uh, 
the uh, wedding uh, to the, uh, this these bills? I I can't say. Mm. It's been very difficult to um, predict what this court will do. Why did the trustees get founded originally back in the colonial times? Um, tell us a little about that. That's one of the longest running governmental bodies, the, the trustees in the country. Yeah. Um, well, before the country as well. It was, yeah, 1680. Six, uh, Six? What was, something like that. Yeah, it's <laughs> very long time ago. Um, the, the original settlers were able to to um, get a patent from Thomas Dongan, I believe he was the gov New York governor. Yep, and um, that gave them brought the the land. Now I don't know what went on between the governor and and the the natives that were here, but somehow the governor <laughs> got ownership and passed that ownership to the original settlers of East Hampton Village. Um, and, and it's just remained ever since. It's uh, like I said, it's one of the oldest um, uh, governmental agencies that is out here. Um, yeah. They're in there. They're, they're, um, the, the places that you're uh, in charge of include uh, wetlands and uh, ponds and pond bottoms and stuff. What where, where what other places? Well, we own a lot of the um, oceanfront beaches. Um, we own bay bayfront beaches, uh, harbor bottomlands. Um, as you said, pond, various ponds around East Hampton. Um, we have some old roads that were used historically for the purpose of gathering firewood and 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 getting to some of these places to do fishing um, through Northwest Woods and such. Um, we also have Laos the the land out in Laos Point, which is um, it, it started out of squat as a squatters village for the Baymen, and has since become this um, Bayfront colony where we have land leases for the residents. Um, I think that there's about 60 homes there. If the original uh, decisions were made by a judge against the people who owned the property, we're talking about land that extended from the back of the beach to the water line, I believe. And mm -hmm. the the uh, trustees and the East Hampton residents had the rights to go there and the access. Um, mm -hmm. What 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 wording was different? Because I think I seem to remember reading that with the early judge decision said there was absolutely no nothing in the deeds that could support the uh, claim by the the property owners who all built beach houses since. 1960 on, on this property um, that um, would enable them to take ownership of it. And yet an appeals judge reversed that. Or, uh, do you have any idea what he might have come up with that the earlier judge did not? I I, I really can't. Um, I, I actually have the reservation here in front of me, if you'd like me to read it to you. Sure. Okay, so this is from the deed. Um, also accept and reserved to the inhabitants of the town of East Hampton the right to land fish, boats, and nets, to spread the nets on the adjacent sands, and care for the fish and materials as has been customary heretofore on the south shore of the town lay, lying westerly of these conveyed premises. So, I mean, I read that as as the traditional fishing, um, which right. has changed over time. I mean, back then they were using horse and wagons to pull their nets. Right. Um, we now have vehicles. Um, yep. <laughs> we, but it doesn't say that. It, it says that we have access to it. Yes, it does. So I don't see how how the judge could have read it differently. 
I don't know. Um, there, there was a demonstration that took place that many trust. I don't know about the trustees attending, but uh, a lot of local residents went out there anyway after the judge's decision for an afternoon and flagrantly, you know, went fishing. You know, or, or drove around on the beach and they, they drove. Tickets, yeah, they. Which they subsequently were were uh, turned were dismissed because the everybody was in, horrified at this turn of events. Um, well, well, it was actually a trespass charge. It was organized by local baymen. Um, the trustees did not partake in in that act, um, and. So it was a trespass charge that that they were hit with. Um, but in order to do that, somebody had to file, sign a complaint, and the the residents refused to do that. Hmm. So that's why those charges were dropped. Um, anyway, um, tell us. I know that you ran for office. Is, do you is the trustee job? How many trustees are there, and how often do they run for election? Okay, so there, there are nine board members. Um, we have, up until recently, been running as a group. Um, so there were nine seats available every two years. Uh, this past election, we were able to uh, get the state to agree to extend those um, terms to four years. And what we did was um, we wanted to stagger the right, right the election. So this past election, the top five vote getters received a four year term. Oh. The balance got a two year term. They will be running again in the next. It won't be this election. It'll be the one after. Um, and How long have you been a trustee. Too long. Uh, <laughs> I, I I ran two terms, uh, two thousand. I want. I think it was like two thousand four and two thousand six. Um, I then left the board because uh, I took a job with the town, and it, it, the Hatch Act uh, wouldn't allow me to to sit on an elected board. That changed in two thousand seven, I believe. And so since 2000, I'm going to say 2009, I, I have been back on the board. Um, what do you do? I, in, I'm sorry, it's two, 2014. Right, right. Uh, and, and these are voluntary, these are unpaid positions, is that correct? It, there's a small stipend. And um, so what do you do as a, for your real job? Or what, what, what is your background? I can happily say I'm now retired. <laughs> um, <laughs> what previous... what did you do during your your? Were you are you born and raised from here in East Hampton? I am, yes. Um, are you related to the Bach that fixes sports cars on uh, next to the IGA in Amagansett? He's my nephew. I <laughs> see. <laughs> he fixes mine. Ah, okay. Good, um, guy, good guy too. Before so, retirement, so, I worked for the town in the Office of Housing and Community Development, doing affordable housing. That was your your career for the most part. Uh, I did it for sixteen years. And um, so, and, and um, do you like living out here? Or do you, have you enjoyed the changes that have taken place since those early days? You Is adjust to the changes the anymore. We've adjusted to the changes, as have you. Um, yeah. you know, it's, we, there's good memories of the old East Hampton, but it is what it is today. And it's not a bad place. I know it is. Do you, are the trustees going to survive and thrive? I believe so. Yeah. yeah it's, it's great. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you for being on the podcast and I will, um, uh, is there any other questions you'd like to, uh, to bring up or in no, I'm 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 good. Um, I just hope people will support us. Um, I, I'm. I, I can't. Let me say one thing about this 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 lawsuit. I believe that the majority of the 
property owners really don't have a clue of, of what's going on in the day-to-day -day, uh, part of, of this case. Um, there's a couple of people who are driving it. Um, the rest of them are just part of their homeowners associations and, and they'll get an occasional report. I think there's a fear that if we win that Truck Beach is going to go back to what it was. Truck Beach will never be again what it was. Hmm. Um, okay. We're just trying to, to regain the reservation so that people like you or I or anybody else who holds a uh, state permit to, to fish can drive through there when the fish are running, cast their rod, and move on. You know, it's really nothing more than that. Yeah. And I think if, if they really understood what, what we're hoping for, that they, they would be a bit more forgiving. Well, it's been quite a trial, I suppose. I guess it really time. has. Yeah. Thank you for being on the podcast, and I will see you soon. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Okay. Bye-bye. Have a good one. You too.